All right. Chorophobics Anonymous, week five. Pretty interesting weekend we had. Uh, things went down to the wire a little bit. Some good matchups uh, this past weekend and some, some good ones coming up. Uh, started with the waivers and trades. Uh, a couple of trades went through today. Uh, Denenberg got Mark Ingram uh, from Kraus for Sean Green. Um, I like this trade for Denenberg. Uh, I think Ingram has some upside, and Sean Green has just proved to be a complete slug to start the season. Um, the other trade was Bootsy uh, giving up Mike Tolbert to get San Antonio Holmes from Deutsch. Um, this one's so-so. These guys have pretty equal value. Uh, I probably like San Antonio Holmes a little bit more because Tolbert has some injury problems, and Ryan Matthews has really taken over in San Diego. Um, as far as waivers are concerned, the big move uh, was Ariel dropping $27 on Ryan Terrain, who, of course, had a big game uh, this past Sunday. Um, frankly, I don't really like any uh, Mike Shanahan back uh you know even though I did pick up Roy Hulu earlier this season that was more of a situation where uh, Felix Jones was questionable and I needed a red skin or a cowboy backup and Hulu was the best one available so um I, I just don't like Shanahan he's notorious for just completely uh screwing over fantasy owners so I, I'm not sure about that 27 seems a little high terrain kind of came out of nowhere um the other big move uh myself I dropped 16 dollars on Victor Cruz um, which actually I thought was high. I thought it was too much, but Ted texted me today and told me that he dropped 15 or he bid 15 on it. So it makes me feel a lot better. Um, frankly, I like Cruz a lot. I think he has really high upside. I think the Giants arrow is kind of pointing up. It, they're sort of moving in the right direction. I think they're going to be a division winner this year, the NFC East. And uh, Cruz is really passed up Mario Manningham um, you know, he, he's not the greatest receiver in the league, but I, I think he's pretty solid and he's got a great matchup this week. Um, all right, getting into the power rankings, uh, start at the back. Uh, a lot of movement this week, a lot of big performances from some guys, so things got pretty interesting. Um, number 12, Brian Deutsch. Uh, he is the lowest-scoring team in the league by a pretty wide margin. Um, he got brutalized last weekend and only managed 79 total points. Uh, Rex Grossman finally cooled off, uh, couldn't really do much against the Rams. Uh, Tim Hightower got benched or was hurt or was something like that. And uh, San Antonio Holmes really did absolutely nothing in that miserable Ravens-Jets game. So things not looking too good for Deutsch. Um, in at 11, uh, Ariel Glicksburg. Uh, Ariel already got the fire sale uh, started earlier this week. Uh, he's trying to trade off some of the pieces. You know, his team's been a pretty big disappointment so far. Um, he, you know... Had a pretty nice week this past week. He put up 126 points. Would have beat me. It was pretty good. But he, uh, you know, ran into two high-scoring teams, Plotsker and Kraus. Um, you know, actually, credit to Ariel. He got Owen Daniels off of me. Granted, that was a trade I proposed, but it was obviously stupid. Uh, he got Owen Daniels. He gave up Blaine Gabbert, who we'll see this weekend if he's even remotely fantasy-worthy. But uh, Owen Daniels has been pretty solid. And uh, he also picked up Denarius Moore off of waivers um, the last couple of weeks. He's been pretty solid. So, you know, some credit goes there, but uh, so far not, not such a great start for Ariel. Uh, in at 10, Billy. Uh, you know, through the first few weeks, uh, Billy ran into some tough competition, some high-scoring teams, um, and he took some losses, you know, despite his team being pretty solid. Uh, this week, um, he did play Oaks' high-scoring team, but really, uh, for going 0-2, Billy has no one to blame but himself. Uh, he put up 79 points. It's pretty disgusting. Uh, Stevie Johnson, um, you know, was non-existent. The Bills laid an egg in Cincinnati. Reggie Wayne was not was nowhere to be found on Monday night. Pierre Garçon got all the looks, and uh, Kellen Winslow just didn't do too much for him. So, And also, Big Ben was miserable. Uh, Billy had a terrible week and went 0-2. Uh, in at number 9, I put myself. Um, you know, I actually had my first truly good week, uh, you know, but I still kind of ran into some bad luck playing Ted. Uh, I went one and one on the weekend with a nice win over Bootsy. Um, and I had a chance to beat Ted on Monday night, but the Buccaneers D uh, didn't really show up for me. It was kind of a, a long shot anyways. Um, you know, Steve Smith, uh, Ray Rice, uh, Greg Olson, and Colt McCoy, uh, you know, they're all good fantasy options. Larry Fitzgerald's a good fantasy option for me, but Sam Bradford's uh, suckiness has really reached new levels. He's just gotten terrible, and it's like a new injury with him each week. Um, this week, my team is just ravaged by the week five bye. I, I'm starting just the ugliest JV squad of all time. Uh, I'll most likely be 2-8 and eight at the end of the weekend. Uh, in at number eight, Justin. Uh, Justin got absolutely smoked this past week. He lost both matchups by a combined 101-point deficit. 
Uh, that's right. That's a real statistic. Uh, you know, a promising start to the season for him really was crushed this past weekend. Uh, it's something he might not recover from. Justin continues to start Thomas Jones uh, and has uh, has Malcolm Floyd going this week. Uh, I think that's going to come back and bo- to bite him. Um, you know, this is a team whose arrow is pointing down. Um, he does still have double as many, as many wins as I do, so can't talk too much trash. Um, and at number seven, Bootsy. Uh, Bootsy had a huge week from Matt Forte. Um, and I should mention uh, this picture. I Googled uh, pay the man, you know, for Matt Forte. Like, thought I'd find some funny pictures about, like, Deion Sanders, like someone saying, like, pay the man, like, get him some money. And this was the first picture that showed up when I Googled pay the man. Um, it's a very bizarre picture. I figured it, it was too good not to put in here. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Bootsy. Uh, he had a great week from Forte uh, and a great week from Dwayne Bowe. He, he uh, went one and one and, and sort of hung with Ben for uh, second place behind Ted. Uh, Mendenhall's injury is going to be kind of troubling for him, depending how bad it is. And uh, Brandon Marshall just has not taken off this season, so I'm sure Bootsy can't be too happy about that. Uh, in at number six, Andrew Oaks, uh, an out of nowhere high scoring week, uh, kind of forces me to take Oaks' squad seriously. A, ser- uh, a big time jump in the power rankings this week. Um, keep in mind the Ravens' defense did put up an ungodly 27 points. Uh, that doesn't happen every week, but he still got great games from Josh Freeman and Ryan Matthews, and Chris Johnson finally showed up. He didn't even score a touchdown, and he still had a pretty good game. Uh, in at number five, Andrew Denenberg. Uh, very lucky to run into Billy's awful team this week. He went one and one uh, what a loss to a majority of other teams as he only put up 95 points um, you know he does have a pretty good core good team has been good on the season um, just this past weekend got slow games from uh, LaDainian Tomlinson and uh, Rob Gronkowski and Kevin Cobb so uh, look for D to get back on the horse uh, in at number four uh, Boris I do like Ben's team. It's a great team um, but you know in his division with with Ted having the squad that he has really been basically playing for the wild card at this point. Um, Andre Johnson's hamstring injury could be a major issue for him as he's pretty thin at wide receiver um, unless Jabbar Gaffney breaks out, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. All right, down to the final three. Uh, In at number three, John Krause, uh, how quickly the tables have turned. Uh, The Lane Bryant division, uh, you know, the laughing stock of the league just two weeks ago, is now easily the strongest division. Uh, You know, uh, Plotsker and Krause are two of the top three high scorers in the league and uh, we had a, a pretty solid weekend last weekend um, we took uh, high points and, and uh, you know uh, Krauss went 2-0 and last weekend so really helps him separate from the pack uh, Welker, Wes Welker just continues to be incredible and uh, Beanie Wells has uh, had an incredible game last weekend a lot of people didn't start him I know but uh, he was he was great he had three touchdowns so uh, in at number two Jason Plotzker uh, an absolute monster week from Plotzker propels him uh, up to number two. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is probably the best player in fantasy football, and Eli Manning has been really hot recently. Uh, LeGarrette Blunt is shaking off a slow start. He's sort of putting it together. He, I know uh, his game wouldn't have been quite the same without that long touchdown run at the end, but still pretty nice. Uh, Plotzker just has a very well-rounded team, so he looks good at number two, but obviously without question, four weeks in a row, uh, n- number one, Ted Rifkin, you know, is the perfect season possible is the question we need to start asking. Uh, Cam Newton got back on track against the Bears, uh, had a really nice game. Calvin Johnson is just a complete touchdown machine. Uh, you know, despite missing out on weekly high points for the first time, uh, Ted's team so far has been unstoppable. So way to go, Ted. Um, looking at towards week five uh, matchups, showdowns in week five. Uh, two big ones, both of them involving John Krause. Uh, the first one, Krause against Ted. Uh, Ted beat Krause a few weeks ago, and this really should be a good rematch uh, for Ted. Brady has the Jets who are on the ropes, and the defense is not looking too hot, and uh, Brady tore them apart last year. And also he has Cam Newton going against a, a kind of a bad uh, Saints defense. Uh, for Krause, he's got Fitzpatrick against the disappointing Eagles, who are going to be hungry for a win. Uh, he also has Hakeem Nix going against the Seahawks, which is a big deal. I think the Giants are just going to put it on the Seahawks this week. Um, so really the difference may is going to be Calvin Johnson. Uh, I unfortunately can envision him putting up like five touchdowns in Charles Tillman's face on Monday Night Football. Um, so I would I would think Ted's undefeated streak is going to continue. Uh, the other big matchup is Kraus and Plotzker, ultimate rivalry here. Uh, also a big weekend for these two, or a big uh, matchup for these two, uh, as it's going to be for the outright division lead. 
Uh, big weekend for Kraus, uh, as I mentioned with these two games. He plays the number one team in the division, and he plays the number one team in the league. Uh, Kraus has some nice matchups, as I just touched on. Uh, Plotzker has Rodgers and Nelson uh, going in prime time against the Falcons, who they just lit up last year, and uh, also has Eli ready to carve up the Seahawks. Um, you know, the the, the uh, secret weapon there is that Kraus has Akeem Nix, who's going to poach some of the points from Eli. So unless Eli is dropping bombs to Victor Cruz, like I hope he does, uh, I would say, uh, you know, Kraus will win a tight one. Um, all right, time to open up the old mailbag. Uh, only two questions, but both of them very high level and detailed. So let's get down to it. Uh, first one uh, is a multi-part question from John Kraus. Uh, first part says, do you think the dominance of the Lane Bryant division will continue? Uh, it's been stellar so far, especially if we factor in that Ted is essentially an honorary division member due to his frequent shopping at the league's favorite female fashion store. Uh, second part, which Deutsch brother has the better team? I know Justin has performed better in the standings, but he continues to start Thomas Jones, who is averaging less than three points a week in parentheses. Isn't that a joke? Why does he keep starting him? Uh, after McFadden and Rivers, his team is terrible. And third part, if you had to pick today, who is looking like the best keeper in the league? Um, all right, well, Kraus, uh, we started off slow as a division, but our division you know, looks pretty stacked. Uh, you and Plotzker have very solid teams and have had great seasons so far. Uh, Oaks just sort of broke out of a mini slump and put up high points last week and uh, did really well. Uh, my team, I believe, I think is strong on paper. It just hasn't really put it together quite yet. Uh, so, yeah, it is definitely the best division in the league. Uh, you know, we'll find out how good we are this weekend, Kraus. Uh, you're taking on Ted. You're taking on Blotzker, so it should be a big weekend for you. Um, you and Ted is really the big representative showdown for our division. Uh, the loser should have to wear a size 18 uh, blouse for a week. Um, for your second part, you know, really I think that uh, Brian's team is not that bad on paper. You know, he's just made some mistakes. Uh, Justin's team, as he said, is is pretty ugly beyond McFadden and Rivers. Um, you know, Brian has high upside in High Tower, Deshaun Jackson, Santana Moss, Aaron Hernandez when he gets back from injury. So I'll take uh, Brian in that one. And then as far as keepers are concerned, there's a couple of really good options. Um, you know, it's sort of early in the year still. But uh, depending on his development, I, I like James Starks a lot for REL. I think he got him for like $2. Uh, Beanie Wells, Kraus on your team, uh, you got him for only $18, and he looks like he's shaping up into a, a pretty good back. And, uh, you know, actually Matt Stafford was really only $46, which is – you know, sort of expensive, but when you look at the production that he's putting up, it's really not that crazy. But obviously, I think this sort of goes without saying, um, you know, paying $15 next year and then $25 in two years for Cam Newton, uh, that's an absolute steal for Ted. So I would say without a doubt, Cam Newton is the best keeper currently. Um, second question, dear Mr. Bauer, can you please list from most likely to least likely which of the following would happen? Uh, 15 people in our fantasy league next year, 15 Mexicans living in an apartment together uh, or Ted beating me in a bacon eating contest giving 15 strips from Jason Plotzker I'm not sure what you mean giving 15 strips either way uh, you know two out of three of these are very likely uh, Plotzker I know you can surely dominate on some bacon but please don't step on Superman's cape all right Ted would smoke you like a rack of ribs in a bacon eating contest call it 15 strips call it 50 strips you know that's Ted's forte so I, w I wouldn't take that away from him uh, I would say uh, the real question would be could we possibly find an apartment with less than 15 Mexicans in it so those both are very likely um, as far as 15 people in our fantasy league I uh, as long as I'm in the league will never happen um, expanding to 12 was big enough and this is our first year of it Furthermore, we switched to a keeper format. Um, it's kind of vital that we keep our same 12 together. Um, expansion, as evidenced by the NBA's current labor situation, uh, is not always a good thing, um, you know, and, and I'd hate to uh, contract in the future uh, and knock out the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves of our fantasy league. Um, you know, I really enjoy Billy and Justin's added presence to the league this year. I think it's made things just, you know, a little bit more challenging in a, in a good way. Um, expanding past 12 is a bad idea. Uh, rosters are already stretched very thin. Um, I mean, you know, I'm starting fucking Blaine Gabbert this week. All right. So thanks for your contributions. Good luck this weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.